Hello, it's Adrian Salbucci once again from Buenos Aires in Argentina. In, on 23rd March 2010, I uploaded onto YouTube a video, a two-part video called Second Republic, an idea whose time has come. Today, I would like to refer to the five pillars that we identified as part of the Second Republic project, which are absolutely essential for every peoples the world over to implement from their own states. The first one, which is the one I'm going to be referring to in this first video, refers to restoring the sovereign nation state. First and foremost, we must point out that the sovereign state is the only republican institution that has the potential power to do two things. First of all, to consistently and comprehensively promote the common good for all, for the majority of the people of a nation, and to defend the national interest against the threats from outside, from inside, and from above. And secondly, to merge, to add up, to align each citizen's tiny parcel of power so that it can become a truly organized community. But I stress, only a sovereign nation-state can do that, because what we have nowadays in just about every country, certainly in my own homeland in Argentina, is a colonial administration state. The state has been eroded so that today it performs the functions of a colonial administration. We have had our countries taken away from us from top down from the global power elite downwards towards our individual countries. The only way to take our countries back is to work from down upwards. We will have to take our countries back from bottom up, and this is a grassroots movement. But first, let's, go, let, let's address some basics. We have to differentiate between three concepts, between nation, state, and government. And this is a problem for the U.S. audience because, you see, you Americans in the United States of America call your nation country. You call your provinces and districts state. You call your nation state government. And you call your government the administration. What a mess. So, as I say, other European countries, my own country in Argentina, we call the nation what you call the country, we call the state what you call government, and our provinces you guys call the states. Worse still, the United States has no proper name. You see, in a way, um, the United States tends to usurp the name of America for yourselves. But look, I was born in Argentina. I'm as American as anybody born in Chicago or in Boston or in Los Angeles. Uh, we're all Americans. The thing is that all the rest of the countries in the Americas have given themselves a proper name. Argentina, Bolivia, Canada, Mexico, Peru, Paraguay, Uruguay, Brazil. The U.S. hasn't, and you have no right to usurp the, the name of America just for yourselves. You'd do better. Actually, I think the Americans would do good, the, the people from the United States, if you started by giving yourself a proper name. Remember. The only other country in modern times that had no name was the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, because they expect the whole world to become a Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. And we know how they ended up. So let's start then by understanding and differentiating these three very important concepts. Nation, the state, and government. The nation is its people. It's the people of a country, the territory, the history, the religion, the milestones, the talent, the work, the capacity to produce, its social and strategic infrastructure, its cities, towns, plains, mountains, rivers, its prairies, seas, valleys, and town halls. It's the living who live in the country, the actual population. But it is also your dead. Or is George Washington, John F. Kennedy, Jefferson, Robert Frost, Martin Luther King, are they no longer U.S. citizens, U.S. people because they died? Uh, is Shakespeare or Queen Victoria or Winston Churchill or John Lennon, are they no longer, no longer British because they're dead? Uh, and also, keep in mind, is mom, dad, your brother, your sister who has died, are they no longer nationals just because they're dead? They're still Americans, they're still Brazilians, they're still Argentinians, they're still British, because the nation includes its dead. And why not? The nation also includes its unborn, those who are still waiting to be born, those who are still expecting to be given a chance in this planet, on this life. <clears throat> it's also the spirit of the nation. It's 
the eternal. It's, it's that which really is beyond time and space. You can even have nations which have no proper territory and no state. Look at the Armenians. They have no nation state and yet they are a people. Look at the Palestinians. Look at the Indians from the both Americas, North and South Americas. So in a way the nation is the hardware. It's the the flesh, the bones, the water, the stone, the mountain, the tree, the sky. Then we have the state, what you call government in America. This is just a template whereby the people of the nation organize themselves, preferably a republic, but it can also be monar monarchic. The state is a virtual reality. It's like the software of, an, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a people's. It cannot be seen or touched. It's an abstract concept, it's jurisdiction, it's laws, it's norms, it's, it's, it's rules. Uh, it lives only in the group mind. It has several dimensions. It is horizontal, the executive branch, the legislative branch, the judiciary. And it's also vertical, the federal or national level, the provincial or state level, the municipal or local level. It has its constitutions, its symbols of powers, the flag, the constitution, the White House, Capitol Hill, uh, the Casa Rosada in Argentina. And the, nation, the state can be sovereign, in other words, final decisions are taken by people who belong to that country for which the state serves, or it can be colonial, final decisions are taken elsewhere. That's the status of Argentina nowadays, and that's the status of just about every other country in the world, even, even the United States of America. So when we say we have to found a new republic, a second republic, it's because it has to be sovereign. It has to replace the present colonial republic that has eroded in each of our lands. It entails a second declaration of independence, and perhaps it might even entail a war of independence. And then the third concept is government. Government is the actual city, citizens, the people of flesh and bone, who take over different posts within the state to become president, vice president, ministers, secretaries of state, governors, mayors, senators, representatives, deputies, judges, and so forth. Today this is formally achieved through what we call democracy. However, so-called democracy, because we do confuse uh, true democracy with so-called democracy is not what we have. True democracy is government of the people, by the people, and for the people. And we think today that democracy is just mechanical vote counting, which can even be very dubious and very fraudulent. The voting system is easily controlled by money. So if you want to become president nowadays, or governor, or senator, or deputy, you have to have a lot of money behind you. Because you see, to be able to reach all the people in a constituency, in a state, in a nation, so that they will know that you're there, you need the power of the media, you need the microphones, you need the press, you need radio. And that costs lots, lots of money. So. Keep in mind, private media are corporations. They are extremely expensive to access. So you would need hundreds of millions of dollars or euros or pesos to become the president of Argentina or of Brazil or of the United States or of England. So what we have is a democracy that is totally dependent on money power. Now money is not democratic, nor should it be. So in country after country, it's the elites who wield money power who will set the agenda, who will actually be known to the nation to perhaps become president or governor or uh, deputy or whatever. They are the ones who fund the politicians they like and they will blackball the politicians that they don't like. And it all depends on how well or not well these various peoples will actually support the common good. And normally, they will end up supporting those who are not in favor of the common, common good. Because as I say, money is not democratic. So in country after country, what we have is the best democracy that money can buy. And that's why we're in so much trouble. So look, let's look at what the functions of a true sovereign state are. What we mean by restoring the sovereign state. The sovereign state has three basic inalienable functions. First of all, integration of the social forces within a country. Second, ensure public citizen awareness. And third, effectively govern and protect. By integration of the social forces, I mean those forces which are...